Hello and welcome to the episode 328 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The birth of Pete Best, the return of the Beatles in the studio, and the release of Hello Goodbye in UK are some of the stories we'll feature in this episode. On the 24th of November 1941, Pete Best was born in Madras, India. His mother Mona, born in Delhi, had met his father while training to become a nurse. The Bests moved to Liverpool in 1945 by ship, arriving on the Christmas Day. Pete was the original drummer of the Beatles before he was substituted with Ringo Starr, some said unfairly. Check out episode 226, where we detail that story, and decide for yourself. Nineteen years later, in 1960, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed their 52nd gig at the Kaiser Keller Club in Hamburg, West Germany. Naturally, George Harrison was not with them, being back in Liverpool after his deportation. See episode 325 for more information on that. One year later, in 1961, George had reunited with the Beatles for a performance at the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool. The band was still a quartet, though, with Paul McCartney on bass. After the Casbah, the lads were driven to the Tower Barroom in Wallasey for Sam Leach's Operation Big Beat II, an 11 pm slot that was graced by the presence of South African black singer Davy Jones, who joined the Beatles for a couple of numbers. For more information on the Operation Big Beat concerts, please check episode 314. In 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, performed a two-hour concert at the Royal Lindo Barroom in Prestatyn, Wales. Also on the bill, Jack Ellis and the Autocrats. On this date, the 1963 autumn tour of the Beatles stopped at the ABC Cinema in Hull, where the Fabs performed the usual two gigs. On the 24th of November 1966, after taking months to recharge their batteries, the Beatles reconvened at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road for a new start in their career. Gone were the pressures of touring, it was time for a new philosophy. The band would only concentrate on recording the best music they could conceive, keeping on experimenting in the studio and releasing only what pleased them. George, John, Paul and Ringo had actually scarcely met at all since early September, but they decided it was time to start working on a new album. The first song of this new era was Strawberry Fields Forever. John had started writing the song in Spain during the long uneventful evenings of his stay for the filming of How I Won the War, see episode 248 for that. Like Penny Lane, written by Paul McCartney, the song saw the author looking back at the pre-fame days in Liverpool, conveying a sense of melancholy and loss that was complicated by John's personal life struggles. He had felt lost without the other Beatles, to the point of being scared that he had built a golden cage around him. In October, his dear friend, some say lover, Al McCogan, had unexpectedly died. His use of LSD had brought him to try and dissolve himself, to reach some kind of spiritual enlightenment about life. The recording of the song was complicated by several changes of structure and sonic approaches happening between take 1, taped today between 7 pm and 2.30 am, and the released version, being significantly different. The first take of the song was in C major, with Paul on Mellotron, John and George on electric guitars and Ringo on drums. After taping the rhythm track, the band proceeded with overdubs, voice, slide guitar, harmonies. The version you can hear on the Anthology 2 album omits these harmony parts. This version of the podcast, instead, 
omit several stories and curiosities that you can find in its deluxe version, available as a series of limited NFTs. All the details, plus a list of things you can do to support my efforts to give you the best music-related content I can, can be found on www.simonmas.com support. Give it a look and act on it, if you will. Thank you! On this date in 1967, with the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film still going on at Norman's Film Productions, the Beatles' third single of the year came out on the UK market. We're naturally talking about Hello Goodbye, featuring I Am The Warriors on its B-side. Hello Goodbye entered the charts at number 3 and featured on the top spot the following week. It would go on to sell 500,000 copies within three weeks. Even EMI was unprepared to such a high demand. The label was forced to pay DECA to use their facilities to press copies of the single. In addition, between 7 pm and 12.30 am, John Lennon had a solo session at the EMI Studios to complete a tape of sound effects for the forthcoming stage production of the Lennon play in his own right, based on his two published books. This concludes our efforts today. Tomorrow, we'll try to explain why John Lennon came to return his MBE medal to the Queen. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.